No Man's Sky was a game with some serious messaging problems. Where most indie games struggled to impress audiences enough to buy, No Man's Sky was able to convince seemingly everyone that it was a magical holodeck with the ability to cure cancer, AIDS, and bring peace to the Middle East with nothing but a trailer. It had hype of epic Duke Nukem Forever meets Half-Life 3 proportions. But on launch day, sadly, cancer and AIDS patients remain unaffected, and the Middle East conflict persists. So what happened? No matter what it was like on launch day, it was going to lead to lots of hater aid consumption by the same people who believe in the new pseudo-religion of THE SINGULARITY and think that science fiction AI is about to spontaneously emerge out of their cell phones and that interstellar travel will happen any day now. These people are always thinking that the holodeck is right around the corner. Oh, and by the way, the singularity is basically just the atheist version of the rapture. And just in case that wasn't clear enough for you, what I'm saying is, it's stupid. It turns out that, surprise, a game made by a team of about 13 people is ultimately going to feel like a game made by a team of about 13 people, no matter how much it costs at launch. I'm not any special prophet of what will happen in the games industry, but this one was so obvious that it was easy to, for me to call this months in advance, which I did in this Reddit post. My point was that No Man's Sky would probably be a good game, but that people needed to keep their expectations reasonable, which people clearly didn't. Sean Murray wasn't exactly helping matters by being all mysterious about what the actual feature set would be. I understand that it's a game about mystery, but come on, he could have given more specifics by saying clearly that it is a Minecraft style survival game and if you don't like Minecraft style survival games then don't buy No Man's Sky, period. If he'd been clearer on that point I think he probably would have a lot less negative Steam reviews. People thought they were getting the definitive Star Trek simulator and what they really got was single player Daisy in space. Still, on the multiplayer issue, Murray was very clear that this was not a multiplayer experience. He said that there were some multiplayer features, which if you read between the lines clearly meant that other people would be able to see the names that you gave things and that's all. He did say that people should be able to see each other if they got to the same place, but that it was unlikely, and we now know that this feature did not make it into the final release at launch. Does that make him a liar? Not really, just someone who was dumb enough to tell the press some of the things that were on their team's list of user stories still subject to change before really deciding which features they were going to have to cut to meet their deadline. This does not justify the level of criticism that the game has received. For example, Total Biscuit said that it was Arkham Knight levels of bad. But that didn't mean much when he also said that Arkham Knight wasn't actually all that bad for him. Since he knows Arkham Knight was unplayable at launch for most PC users, while No Man's Sky was playable at launch for most PC users, this was an unfairly misleading statement from Total Biscuit. Still, Let's get to the bottom line question. Is No Man's Sky worth $60 at launch or not? I'd have to say the answer to that is ultimately no. Just no. Not unless you happen to be in the select group of survival game fans or programmers like me who are very, very interested in the technology that makes the game work and so absolutely have to get your hands on it to satisfy your curiosity. For everybody else who isn't near the center of one of those two groups who are the game's core audience, No Man's Sky might be worth picking up when it gets on sale or in a bundle or whatever a year or two down the road, especially if it is expanded with lots of free DLC as I expect it probably will be. There is lots of room for adding more features to this thing, but there's enough here to really get started having a good time with it if you are in this game's niche audience. 
Personally, I'm definitely in its niche audience as a programmer, so much so that I pre-ordered it. On the strength of the gameplay footage we were seeing, beyond the trailers, the trailer by itself wouldn't have convinced me, having followed the game's development closely enough that I had a clear idea of what to expect, and I think it mostly came through for me. Few issues, some frame drops, can't run on the highest settings, but the game is playable and that's the main thing. It takes a lot to get me to pre-order stuff too. Let's see, what else have I pre-ordered lately? Uh, StarCraft II Legacy of the Void, because I am forever Brotoss and bros don't let bros play Terran or Zerg. And if crowdfunding counts, then... Super Hot. Super Hot. Super Hot. Super Hot. That's about it, really. I generally don't believe in pre-ordering stuff unless it's a big deal from a team you know is going to deliver, who is showing you significant amounts of actual gameplay footage. Generally, pre-ordering is bad unless you feel like it's a really sure thing. Also, No Man's Sky is way better than Spore, honestly. But all this has been said by others already. What have I got in my review which they haven't got to justify this video? I have some interesting thoughts on the topic of procedural content generation in games. I tried very hard in the aforementioned Reddit post to explain that No Man's Sky's procedurally generated planets are of necessity not going to be really all that different from one another. There are a few basic planet types, a few basic animal types, a few basic plant types, and what happens is that their colors and predefined parts that make them up get swapped around a little when you go to different planets. There are lots of complaints from non-programmers that this is somehow lazy and cheap, and I want to explain that in fact, no, it's not. All the procedurally generated content in games works this way. It uses random numbers constrained by a complex, well-tuned rule set to produce a somewhat narrowly defined range of hopefully acceptable results. What is frustrating about what I'm seeing from games media about this title is a lack of understanding how much of what some people dislike about No Man's Sky is attributable to Hello Games, and some of it very well might be, simply is, I mean some of it is their fault. The, the lousy inventory system is their fault, and how much of it is simply inherent in the math. I initially tried to explain this using another well-known procedurally generated content game, Minecraft. But this ticked off the really hardcore No Man's Sky fanboys who overhyped this thing beyond all reason, because of course No Man's Sky was going to be so much better than Minecraft. So I've decided that I should instead compare it to Rogue, the text-based game from the 1980s. Every game of Rogue is unique. The game generates a different dungeon for you to explore every time you play. No two are exactly alike. But no matter how the passages in a game of Rogue twist and turn, they are all ultimately going to be Rogue dungeons. They aren't going to suddenly be something completely unlike all the other rogue dungeons you've ever played. They will all have the basic, common features that the developers put into the algorithm. So while every game of rogue is superficially unique, all games of rogue are fundamentally the same. One gets bored after playing a few of them because, as a player, one quickly picks up on the sort of patterns that the algorithm produces. No Man's Sky and Minecraft and Terraria and every other proc gen game ever work the exact same way. Every No Man's Sky planet has a unique topography and a unique combination of creatures and plants, but they are all No Man's Sky planets. None of them are going to really surprise you all that much once you have seen all the basic types of things that these planets have. And that's not a bad thing. That's just an inherent limitation of computers and math. A lot of ignorant people get ticked off when you say that procedurally generated content is random. But it is, in fact, always, always, always based on pseudo-random number generation of one kind or another. The term Random does not necessarily mean that absolutely anything can happen with no rules and no thought put into it. 
nor does it necessarily imply uniform probability distribution where all possibilities are equally likely, nor does it necessarily imply white noise with no relationship between the different data points. If somebody says procedurally generated, that means determined by a pseudo-random number generator with some rules. Procedurally generated content games use pseudo-random number generators constrained by fine-tuned rule sets to produce experiences that have infinite variety, but only finite novelty. I am here using the term variety to refer to something that is objectively measurable. Variety means the number of possible outcomes, while I am using the term novelty to describe the subjective experience of discovery that the player is looking for when they turn to an exploration game like No Man's Sky or Minecraft or Rogue. Developers who use procedurally generated content to make games are trying to produce novelty and proc gen techniques are a useful tool for achieving that but it only goes so far. It can produce pseudo-infinite variety, but only finite novelty. You aren't going to keep playing No Man's Sky and be completely surprised by each planet you see. And all the programmers in the room knew this as soon as they heard a basic description of the project. And that wasn't just an opinion, that's math. People who understand how the math works know that these systems do not produce infinite novelty, just infinite variety. Even if they wouldn't necessarily put it in those same exact terms I'm using. So, for me, the irritating thing about the reception that this game has gotten is that people don't seem to understand these facts. Some of the criticisms may be legit. I mean, that inventory system is kind of crap. But some, like Triple G Man Lives saying that programmers should stop using proc gen, are just downright uninformed and stupid. All the big games use procedurally generated content now. Do you think somebody went and placed every single hill, rock, and tree to start making the Skyrim map by hand from nothing? Think again. There are some legitimate reasons to criticize No Man's Sky, but its use of procedurally generated content is not one of them.